Hello everybody and welcome back to part 3 of our RimWorld 40k Let's Play where the Blood Ravens are building up a fortress monastery here on Cronus. We're trying to emulate the Dark Crusade from Dawn of War 1 and as I've been working between episodes a group of recruits have delivered themselves right to our doorstep. So we're going to do what we can to fight these uh, people without killing them. So they are human, but they're not heretics, as far as we're aware, and they're not uh, Tau loyalists. So these guys are uh, the perfect group for us to be recruiting from. And as it happens, it looks like they're all wearing shields. So range combat, probably not going to be super effective for it. I mean, granted, I'm willing to bet a couple of bolt, uh, bolter bursts would penetrate those shields pretty easily. But anyway, uh... Our melee weapons will not be affected by the shields, so we may as well get stuck in to glorious melee combat anyways. And we'll see what we can do with our fists and with other melee weapons we have to knock them down, but not kill them. And then we'll take whoever we like as a prisoner and future recruit, and we'll let the Emperor sort out the rest. So... Let's see here. I'm going to draft everybody, uh, except for Mikolas. We're going to let him rest some more. But everybody else can get over here. And I'll need to be careful that I don't let anybody start shooting. So once they get over here, I'm going to tell them not to fire at will. I'm honestly a little bit wary, uh, wary about the power weapons as well, but... Um, I think it'll be okay. You know, we might maim one or two of them, but all in all, I think we'll be all right. So we're not going to let them fire at will. Otherwise, I think we're good. Are they coming here, or what's the deal? It says that they are... Oh, it's a siege. They want to use mortars. Well, they don't have any mortars. Hmm. Oh, okay. They're going to set up there. Well, in that case, let's just go fight them. I was going to let them come a little bit closer to the base because I I would prefer to fight where it's going to be easier to get people back to safety if they get badly injured. But they're going to set up here, so there's not much we can do about it. And... Either way, it was worth letting their stuff deploy because now we get free meals and whatnot. Free meals and resources. So let's just charge on up here. They do have some pretty nice looking, excuse me, melee weapons there. So, uh, you guys just going to ignore us or what's the deal here? Let's see. Cyrus, I don't, oh God. How are they shooting out of their shields? They're cheating. Go melee attack him, please. Tarkus, um... Just get stuck in. Get over here. Duel, take on the one with the sword. Uh... Why can't I... There we go. Martellus... I'd like you to get in here as well. Gordian, go after the one shooting. Unfortunately, Cyrus is fighting several of them in melee combat, and uh, while he is perfectly capable, he is also the least well-armored, so I'm a little bit worried about that. And of course, this does play to their strengths. Oh my god, he's just like opening up point-blank on us. Hurry, go, go, go. Tarkus, start smacking him up. Okay. I think you... Oh, you didn't kill him, fortunately. But Cyrus is down and bleeding. Uh, that's unfortunate. But again, he is the only one not in power armor. You're still fighting too. Go help him out, please. Come on. Drop him. Tarkus, Tarkus needs backup. Uh, go melee attack that person. Get in here, get in here, get in here. Oh, wait. Sorry, you're still fighting somebody. 
All right. They're starting to flee. We're not going to let them flee. No, God, no. Don't open up on him while he's on the ground. Okay, so they're all down. Immediately, I need Gordian to rescue Cyrus. And then... Nobody is dead, but a lot of them are badly injured. So let's survey the potential recruits here. So we have Nikephos Alaros, who could be a Space Marine candidate. He has passion for both forms of combat. He's also got a little bit of passion for crafting and some passion for social and a bit of skill in social. So he's like maybe an officer candidate. Oh, he was an officer. Okay. Well, me and the game appear to agree. Uh, he's a bit old for a Space Marine recruit, but I'm not going to have any hard requirement on age, unlike in the lore where they tend to take, um, like, adolescence. Uh, we have no such limitations here, but I will try to recruit younger people for Space Marine candidates. So, no 60-year-olds, potentially, but um, I'm, I'm not going to say, like, they have to be 15 or something. Uh 28 is young enough, as far as I'm concerned. We also have Nikitas Akomina. They have, like, very Greek names. Uh, wow, so you are only interested in melee combat. That's the only thing that you do. Patient, cook, incompetent, pretty. I just, I wonder if he's just too one-dimensional. It would be really hard to train him up to be any good at shooting. But hey, maybe he is a potential assault marine recruit, right? You give anybody enough gene seed implants and a chain sword, and they're going to be pretty nasty with 12 melee skill. Uh, oh, wow. Gordiana is a beast at just about everything, so she's steadfast but greedy. Ooh, that's rough. Um, greedy is really bad. And so the other thing is I, I'm not going to make any female Space Marines. But Space Marines aren't the only type of pawn that we're going to have in our colony. I'm not going to do any Sisters of Battle, though. Uh, I would rather... Well, here. So A, for lore reasons, the Sisters of Battle wouldn't be hanging out in a Space Marine Fortress Monastery. Uh, but B, I would rather focus on Sisters of Battle in their own um, Let's Play. So instead of muddling this let's play with a bunch of different Imperial factions, I want to keep this very Space Marine focused. So she could be a tech priest for us. It would be a... I mean, she could still get involved in combat, right? But uh, I just don't know if she has kind of the skills set for that. She can craft. She just doesn't really enjoy it. She likes animals, but... Interestingly, she has, like, no skill for it. She can mine. She can cook. Hmm. I'm sure we could find some purpose for her. How badly is she? Who bit off her leg? Davian Thule bit her leg off. Holy shit. Um, we're gonna have to do a lot of, uh, stabilizing here if we're going to get these people uh, back to our base. And unfortunately, hold on, hold on. Let's let's be smarter about this. So Cyrus, he's down because he got shot point blank with a machine gun. But he's n in no uh, risk of dying. So you know what? Gordian, scratch what I told you. Um, Tarkus, you are going to rescue Cyrus. Oh, Nicholas got up just for that. Um, let... Let Tarkus take him. Nicholas, you're going to grab a prisoner for me, I think. The issue is, I think a lot of them are at risk of dying. We just beat the other crap out of them. 
And so uh, Gordian's going to need to do a lot of stabilizing on site. Oh, God. Did Duel bite off another... Oh, Cyrus. Oh, my God. Why are these Space Marines, like, taking bites out of people? This is ridiculous. How are you... Hold on. Sorry. We got distracted there. I got very thrown off by the fact that we're, like, eating people alive. So, Demetrios. Melee combat. Artistic and medical. 18 years old. Nimble, fragile, neat. So, he might actually be an interesting apprentice to Gordian. We'll have to train him up in shooting, obviously. But he has the passion for medical and for melee combat. And I tend to arm my... Uh, what's it called? My apothecaries as they would be on the tabletop, which is uh, generally with a melee weapon and like a pistol. So yeah, he's interesting. He's also about to die. Uh, let's see, how quickly can you tend or stabilize him? Meanwhile, we have Fossis, Fossis. Greedy and restless, really good at melee combat with a lot of passion for it. And then some interesting skills here as well. Uh, here's another guy who's maybe a decent recruit. Are you on the verge of death? Nine hours? Okay. Then here's the guy with the machine gun that shot Cyrus. He is, wow, perfect space marine recruit. Uh, he's a little bit old, but I think we can make do. Death in ten hours. Again, somebody... Took a chunk of his ear. All right, we we got to be careful about throwing people into melee combat here because <laughs> this is getting a bit out of hand. Um, maybe it's because they're not wearing helmets. I'll have to put helmets on them so that they stop taking chunks out of people. And then Herakas Oska. He's a bit old. So probably not a space marine. He does have a lot of passion and skill for shooting. Um, and a lot of passion for crafting and medical. He might be another good tech priest candidate. Are you going to die? Nine hours. Shoot. Um, Thule, start stabilizing him. You're working on that guy. Tarkus is going to grab Cyrus. Martellus is still fighting. Uh, you know what? Okay, I will let... Nicholas do the rescuing here. Who's shooting? Why are you shooting? I need you to make sure that this guy doesn't die. He's going to be your apprentice. Come on, come on, you can do it. Every, every band-aid you throw on him is more time that it buys you. How are you doing? 18 hours, 20 hours. We're going to have to replace a lot of body parts on these people. It's a bit unfortunate. Okay, Martellus, what are we looking at here? 19, nine hours. Oh, who is the person you're fighting? Athletic gastronomist, shooting in melee. Man, I swear, there's a lot of good recruits here. He was what, nine hours? Okay, yeah, start stabilizing that person. I know you guys aren't medics by any means, but uh, just do what you can, stop the bleeding. Uh, Gordian can handle the rest when we get back to base. Did you just, like, body slam him? What was that? Uh, stabilize that guy. Thule, go stabilize her. God, are we going to take all ten of these people back with us? We just might. <laughs> we just might. Uh, they also brought us a lot of food, so potentially uh, we have enough food to keep feeding them so how's this guy doing death in 12 hours well if you stop that bleeding I think he'll be just fine we got to be careful too because he does have an acidifier oh wait no never mind that's just gonna destroy his gear which we don't really care about uh, Cyrus I'm sorry that <laughs> Nicholas is not here yet Oh, okay, perfect. He just arrived. Is this guy gonna die? Let's see. 
Thule. Go work on him. Got one more there. He's good to go. Do me a favor and go ahead and capture. Oh, right. We need somewhere to put these prisoners. Um, well, shoot. Where can we put them? You know what? The Space Marines never sleep anyway, so let's just turn this into a prison area. We're going to need a few more beds. That don't, that's only seven. So... What am I clicking on here? Uh, I need a sleeping spot. Let's just do one, two, three. Okay. So, yeah, we'll put the prisoners in there. Probably going to be feeding them raw food for the onset of this. But maybe if we can get a nutrient paste dispenser down, how much would that cost us? Production, nutrient paste dispenser. Uh, unfortunately, hmm. Like, how could I make this work? I might just put it here with a hopper behind it, and hopefully they use up the food before it spoils. I don't know if that's a good idea, but I don't really have a better method right now. I could try to, like, destroy an entire wall. Or set up something temporary over here. That might be the way to do it. Um, let me check something, though. So these smooth stand sandstone walls, if, if that's what our base is going to be, I want to be very careful about um, destroying walls because I can't... Uh, oh, you know what? I think I can build them. Okay, good. So, in that case, I don't need to worry about it, because I can I can replace them. So, I think that's what we'll do. We'll probably mine into here a bit, just enough to get a nutrient, dis nutrient paste dispenser in there with uh, a hopper on it. So, let's see. We need to mine out... Probably... Like that. And we'll cut a little space in there for the hopper. Maybe I'll make a little bit extra room. All right, that works for me for now. So, uh, one more second, sorry. This is, it was not ready for 10 new recruits or 10 prisoners. I'm just gonna have the Space Marines sleep right here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's do seven for now. All right, so back to this hot mess. Oh shoot, there was somebody over here too. Shooting, crafting medical intellectual. Oh crap, she's perfect tech priest. Uh, we accidentally cut out her. So in order to implement the gene seed uh, stuff the way I wanted to, effectively every human pawn now has gene seed slots and I tried to make them so small that they would realistically never get damaged, but unfortunately the game doesn't seem to uh, take that into account for some reason. Because they, they should have been so small that like, this statistically they would never get hit, but that appears to have not worked. So I'm going to have to try something different. Uh, so you've got Cyrus. You're working on him, right, Thule? How's this guy doing? Alright, so they're both they're both stabilized. This guy's stabilized. Why don't you go ahead and capture him then? You can capture this guy. And Thul, if he's... Oh, never mind. He's not. Wait, Nicholas. What are you doing, bro? Just just get him, get him back to bed. <laughs> you don't have to leave him on the ground. Alright, so you're stable, right? Yes. Go ahead and capture them. Martellus, if these two are stable, then, well, we got one more that needs to be stabilized. But when you're done, take one back with you. Actually, I should grab her. She's more likely to get back up, I think, and one of the better characters as well. Okay. Do me a favor and capture her, please. 
That's an interesting looking sword. What's it from? Oh, bondage bed torture. I didn't know that that added weapons too. I'm glad these guys move so fast. I'm probably going to send them on a few round trips to get everybody. I can't believe we got all of them alive. I, I guess because we were fighting mostly with fists and the, the butts of our guns. So who are you tending to? This guy? Uh, don't worry about that right now. I need you to go grab... Uh, I like this guy. He's a good candidate for a tech priest. And we need tech priests. Let's see. Who else is uh, done making deliveries? Tarkis. Grab him. Duel, it looked like you were done as well. Nicholas, you're moving kind of slow, so we're not going to have you take part. Where's Cyrus at? Oh, wait. You're still carrying him, aren't you? Huh. You are taking so long to do anything. Well, that siege is over. We have... Oh, somebody did die. Oh, bummer. She... Oh, never mind. She was good, but she's also a pyromaniac. Okay, so the one colonist I would not have taken was also the one that died. Cool. There's so many bodies and things that I couldn't see her. or Maybe I just completely overlooked her. Let's get all of that freed up. And you know what? The weapons can get allowed, too. I've been smelting down all the weapons that aren't... Uh, what do you call it? Ooh, I need to bring that back. That aren't Space Marine weapons, so all of these random bits and bobs here will uh, basically just get turned into scrap that we can reuse. I wish there was a better way to do this, but I don't want to unforbid everything because I have stuff forbidden over there that I would like to keep that way. What is this? A rail gun? Holy shit. Did you hit anybody with that? I, I guess not, or if she did, it would have been inconsequential because nobody was all that beat up. Cyrus got it the worst, but that's because the guy opened up point blank on him with that LMG. Let's see. Uh, there's what, two more out here? Could you go capture her, please? And Gordian... You are about to make a delivery. We'll send Duel to get the other one, and I'm going to let Gordian start patching people up. Okay, so Duel, you're going to get the last one, and that would be him. Right? That's everybody? Looks that way. Right, so quick update. Uh, the game crashed on me right after we got everybody back into the base. So I had to replay that. Uh, I did my best to replicate the outcome that we saw previously. So uh, I could have uh, saved, what's her name here? Uh, Briennios. So I, I had the option of potentially saving her this time, but just again to emulate the outcome previously, since I wasn't gonna show the redo, uh, I just, executed her and then I made sure that everybody else got back to base uh, in one piece well maybe not in one piece but uh, the majority of them have most of their bits intact but the permanent injuries that they've suffered are very likely not the same that they were from the other attempt so if you notice that anything is different that's probably why but I I didn't want to <laughs> uh, I didn't want to have to throw out the other recording because of all the hilarity that ensued with the the biting off of things by the Space Marines. So, um, yeah. So, just letting you guys know that uh, I did, in fact, have to replay that, but the outcome ultimately was the same. Uh, other 
than that. Cyrus is a little bit less beat up. He actually didn't go down this time, but he still did take a little bit more of a beating than the other Marines did. It's interesting. I, I thought his armor would hold up better than it did. He is wearing carapace armor, which is not really on the same level as power armor, but it should still be as good or better than what a lot of these guys were wearing. Granted, when he did go down, he was fighting like three enemies at, a, at once. Versus this last time around, he was only fighting one or two at a time. And so I believe that's why he held up a lot better. He wasn't so badly outnumbered. Anyways, just wanted to fill you guys in. Uh, it's going to be a little while, I imagine, before anything else interesting happens. So I'm going to probably cut here and come back when we've uh, passed a bit more tedium. Oh, actually, one last thing. So I mentioned previously that I wanted to keep the double walls around inside the base. And I, I'm still going to do that. However, I'm, I'm probably going to restrict it to... So around the big central hall here it's still going to be double walled and then all of the buildings in the front that are uh, more likely to be breached and or uh, affected by temperature those are still going to be double walled too but for example the wall between the apothecarium and the hallway doesn't need to be too thick i don't think so i've basically widened everything out this is the same, I just made this hallway wider over here, and then this room got an extra row there. So actually I need to update that mining order. Uh, what else? Uh, that's probably it. Let's go ahead and take a quick break here, and I'll come back when something more, more interesting is happening. We just had a bulk goods trader arrive, so that might be interesting. They don't look... Uh, they don't look like traders or anything, so I think it'll be fine. They look like just regular Imperial citizens, presumably. I mean, obviously, they're uh, dressed a bit rustic, but they are living out on kind of a frontier world on Cronus, so it's a bit expected, I, I guess. Um, I am curious to see what they'll have. Bolt goods... I'm not sure that there's anything that we will need. But it... Eh, I guess let's just see what they have, right? Oh, wow. Look at all the meat Cyrus is cranking out from all these orcs. I had to update the butchering bill because the orcs are in their own category. So I had it set up for Tau, but I forgot to get the orcs in there as well. It looks like we'll have quite a bit of orc meat and some orc leather. We could have some orc leather couches. Might be nice. Uh, so where are these guys? They sure are taking their time. Might want to just go to them, honestly. Oh, look at Tarkus. Found in uh, Ibex. Cool. Free food. I think we're going to do all right. We have a lot of food stocked up. And given that our enemies are not human and therefore edible, uh, I think we'll be okay. I have two people, uh, both Thule and Mikolas, working on reducing the resistance of the prisoners. Again, we're playing on a very early version of 1.2, so we are still dealing with the old system where it, everything is a kind of RNG-based percentage. And so even if we get the resistance down to zero, it's still a matter of overcoming this recruitment difficulty and the recruitment chance. But getting that resistance down will certainly help. And so we'll need to chip away at that. Again, I have two people working on it, so it shouldn't take that long. I'll need to go through and survey everybody that we took prisoner and see where they're best suited because we do need some servitors, as I mentioned before. And so uh, I, I don't remember if I talked about how I want to implement them, but I'll, I'll go over it really quickly here. So what I intend to do is I, I have the prison labor mod installed. So, I will... Who's idle? Cyrus? You, what, you finish butchering and you just decide to walk off? You're not going to haul any of that? Bastard. Uh, so, I'm going to use the prison labor mod to basically turn my prisoners into servitors and make them work. I can redress them in some servitor clothing that's added by my mod. And 
again, we'll just put them to work using the prison laborer system. Because I don't want them to show up as colonists. They will, you know, take up a slot up here, and then we run into, obviously, people not liking us being cruel to them, or, you know, if they die, those types of things. I don't want them treated like colonists, because in 40k, servitors are, you know, treated as tools. And we're not playing ideology. Ideology has ways to implement this a little bit more effectively, but... Again, I'm playing on an early version of 1.2, so prison labor is going to be the best way that we can do it. Okay, so our guests have arrived. Thule, I think you are probably the best person to do this. You have the highest social skill. And who better to represent the Blood Ravens than their captain? All right, so he's heading on out to talk to Fausto. And let's see what they have. So we could buy some animals from them. I don't think I want to do that, though. They have bird meat, 209 of it. Um, components. Now, that's something I'm more interested in. Actually, the advanced component I'm very interested in. In fact, I wish they had more than one. I would buy them all. Because there are certain things... Actually, I think to make a fabrication bench, we need advanced components, which is kind of a strange design choice by the game because in order to make components, you need a fabrication bench. And in order to make a fabrication bench, you need not only components, but advanced components. It's a bit weird. But, uh, yeah. Hmm. Carpet, some random clothing... Not really seeing anything down here that we would want, but I will definitely take the advanced component, and it's tempting to take the regular ones too. I think we're all right on food. The neutromine is tempting because we could start making medicine, but it would be a while before we would actually be able be able to to do that right we need to build the facilities first so maybe not immediately useful we can put that off to later so that's going to be a good chunk of our silver is it worth it do we need that many components we have 48 that's pretty good it's more than we started with and you know presumably we could always mine more but, yeah, without the advanced component, we can't start manufacturing them ourselves. So that's kind of the concern I'm having. Well, I guess let's buy them. We can always resell them if it turns out we need that silver for something else. Granted, we may not get as much for it. But, you know, I, I don't think it'll be that hard to get more silver. And if another trader comes by, they might be willing to buy all the weapons that we've picked up. So it would be um, maybe worth looking at that. Ooh, I picked up a lot of shelves, too. I'm actually going to keep these because we are definitely going to build artillery at some point. So, you know, why the hell not use them? Ooh, orc leather is actually quite valuable. What would I get for that? Looks like it's worth... 23, 2400 basically, because it puts us, it goes from negative, basically we owe 1400, and then if we sell all of it, we end up making 900, so that's actually pretty valuable stuff, but I will need to make furniture out of something. Granted, we could always use wood, but there are certain things that we will need fabrics for, right? And so I, I think it's probably wise to keep a lot of it. Uh, I guess we could kind of split the difference. Let's sell 350. Uh, let's make it 400. What do we need to break even? That's good enough. Okay, so that'll leave us with a good amount. Of 
And let's see, duel, before you book it, please, for the love of God, haul these critical components indoors. And actually, Tarkus, can we dismiss this guy? Whoa, 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 why is there meat out here? Oh, because this is full to the brim. Uh, shoot. Animal fat, how long does it usually last? Hmm. Like, do I need to freeze it? We'll spoil. Uh, come on. Because I, I don't want the meat to spoil. The meat is edible. This is not. I guess let's, um... Shoot. Let's go here. Foods. Is this under raw resources? Where would that be? I don't think it's under food. Let's see, meat, vegetarian, animal products probably, yeah, animal fat. I'm gonna remove animal fat. That should prompt them to take it out of here and move it out there, and then put the meat indoors. Yeah, so he just dumped a diaper there. It still says it's, oh, right, it's sub, freezing outside so it doesn't matter if we put it outside uh, it will deteriorate because it's outdoors but honestly I'm less concerned about that I just I want to make sure that the meat is kept safe because the meat meat is life right whoa buddy you're crossing the threshold there and if you look like you're gonna enter our base I might have to open up on you with a bolter this is not a tourist area uh, we hit some compacted steel up here, so I'm going to make sure we get all of that. But we're making a little bit of headway on our um, apothecarium here. I'm debating when we when we get this dug out, because obviously we're, we're not going to have much need for an apothecarium immediately. What I can do is basically set it all up, but then turn it into the sort of the prisoner area. And we'll just have them sleeping in what will eventually be the medical beds. And that way we just kind of get them out of here. Uh, part of the problem is there's not... So this is actually a door, right? There is a door here. But it's it's just held open. So they could leave. But if I were to say, like, door this off, then they'd have a little bit more space to wander around. They wouldn't just be stuck in that room. Uh, let's see. Oh. I wish the game wouldn't uh, <laughs> add relationships to my pawns, especially when I have created those pawns with Prepare Carefully. I'll have to go into the dev tools and remove that. Um, Tarkis, you're praying. When you're done praying, would you mind hauling all that meat for me? And eventually I'd like to get these survival meals indoors to, in fact... It might be worth throwing down a stockpile zone. Let's say like here. Eventually, you know, obviously we'll want to get everything inside, but some things don't really matter at all versus others do. And so things like, let's say textiles, medicine, drugs. I don't know if the mortar shells, let's revisit that. Why are, they on, why are they on there twice? That's weird. Anyway, uh, components, regular components, chem fuel, and packaged survival meals should be among those too. Yeah, anything that won't spoil. That's fine. The weapons can stay out here. The raw materials can stay out here. In fact, it's probably better that the fat stays out there because it might be warmer inside. Uh, it's just above freezing. Oh, but yeah, never mind. It's all the same. Looks like Martellus and Tarkus are teaming up to finish our apothecarium floors. Now, the floors that they're working on are temporary. Uh, obviously, if we're going to be doing surgery in this space, we want to make sure that it eventually has sterile tiles. But... 
for now we just need a floor that's not like a rough stone dirty floor down so take care of that another thing i've been working on and unfortunately it requires a lot of micromanage on my part is uh stripping the prisoners of their armor and then re-equipping them with their basic clothing so the way i'm doing that is actually i'll i'll show you guys right now if i right click on a cominata here i can strip him and that will take everything off and then what i can do is i have a mod that lets me dress patients so if i right click i can say dress a cominata and then it'll ask me what i want to dress him in so i'm gonna put these actually interesting those are Cadian fatigues those are from my mod so um We'll throw those back on him. They're going to get set to the side there, and then they get put on the body. And if we want to, we can equip a few more things. So I can say, dress him in that hat as well. And we could throw the cloth cloak on there too, but I don't think there's necessarily need. But let's make sure that we pick up the armor and the shield belt. And we'll get the cloak out of here too, because we'll just destroy that probably. So yeah, we'll take those out. I've been throwing them on the floor here because I want to make sure that they get sold, not destroyed for a lot of these. And the shield belts, we may actually want to make use of because there is a ranged shield belt in here, meaning whoever is using it can still shoot, which is really, really great. Uh, because, again, a lot of our melee guys are also carrying ranged weapons so Thule has a sword but he also has a, a bolt pistol right so if we could have that protection for our melee characters but still be able to you know exchange fire that would be brilliant so anyways I think I'll end it there I need to strip a few more of these guys there's still some people in plate armor and uh, like flak jackets so we'll want to make sure that they don't have those that way if they do decide to have a prison break they won't be so heavily armored Granted, you know, without weapons, they stand very little chance against Space Marines, but we want to be able to put them down with as little effort as possible. Oh, also, this is the next little project I'm working on in this room. It's just an in-wall heater because it is uh, quite cold outside. It's not as bad inside. You can see it's about a six degree difference. And then in here, it's even warmer at 10 uh, Celsius but you know they would probably be a lot happier if it was more like 20 25 Celsius so we're gonna give them a little bit of heat in here and I may have to look at heating for the entire base honestly I the Space Marines don't care but uh, well the tech priests probably wouldn't either and the servitors don't matter so yeah maybe nobody would care but at least for the prisoners it'll make them easier to recruit if they're a little bit less uncomfortable anyways thank you guys so much for watching i had a great time playing some rimworld with you rimworld 40k that is and i'm really really hoping that the uh, technical issues i had in this episode aren't indicative of things to come but we will certainly see uh but yeah with that thank you so much for watching and i look forward to seeing you guys back here for the next episode